What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're looking at rehab exercises for cervical stenosis, which is a neck issue that causes radiating nerve pain, usually down one arm. So if you've got nerve pain in your arm or maybe you had an MRI and they pointed out stenosis, then you'll wanna stay tuned for today's exercises. When I'm working with patients, uh, the word stenosis, people don't really understand what that means. So I think it's helpful to see on the spinal model. So when we think about the neck, we think about our spine, we have a nerve root that comes out on each side, a right nerve root and a left nerve root at each level of the spine. So all the way from just below the skull through every level of the neck. And when we, somebody has stenosis, we're basically looking at these small holes here where the nerves come out. So those little holes are called the intervertebral foramen. When someone has stenosis, it basically means that that hole has gotten smaller. It could either be from arthritis or a disc herniation. The disc can push back into that space, but basically the space becomes smaller and that can cause irritation or even mechanical constriction of the nerve root. So when you hear the term stenosis, maybe again, you see that on an MRI, that's basically what it's referring to as a narrowing of that intervertebral frame and that small hole which can cause, again, nerve pain to radiate down one arm. So in today's video, we'll look at exercises basically to help improve health of the nerve and to open that foramen, which can help reduce nerve pain. For the first technique, we're gonna work on releasing some of the muscles in kind of the upper thoracic base of the neck region. Sometimes uh, nerve pain can radiate into the area between your shoulder blades. So if we kind of loosen that up, it can just help the neck in general and pain that goes down there. So you're gonna use a tennis ball or the cross ball, or I've got this kind of little pinky ball that works well for massaging these muscles. So for the first one, you're gonna put it right here, kind of at the top corner of your shoulder blade. This is right near where a muscle called levator scapulae attaches. So you're gonna lay back on the ball, put it in that spot, and just kind of try to find tender places, let your head rest on the ground, just find tender spots and try to get it to relax. Just take some deep breaths. With this one, you can also move your arm up overhead. That muscle attaches on the shoulder blade, so if we move the arm, it helps to dynamically mobilize the levator muscle. Levator runs up and attaches up to the upper part of your neck, so if we get that muscle to relax, it can take some tension off of the neck. So that's the first one. Then what you're gonna do is sort of follow that line down your back, go a little farther down to in between the shoulder blade and the spine where your rhomboid and middle trapezius are. Lay on the ball and again, this time you can kind of reach across your body, reach overhead, but you're basically just hunting for tender spots in that area, again, in between your shoulder blade and your spine. Like I said, sometimes the nerve roots from the neck will cause pain down there. So just kind of work your way through. You can kind of walk your feet, roll that ball along your back, find tender spots, and just try to get those muscles to relax. This first exercise is really just all about reducing pain and tension, okay? So this is a soft tissue mobilization of levator scapulae, and then the rhomboids and middle trapezius farther down the back. Our second exercise is gonna be a movement to help mobilize the nerves that run down our arm. We've got three major nerves that run into our arm. So this is just a great one for mobilizing the shoulder complex and those nerves. This is called an angel. You're gonna lay on a foam roller all the way from your tailbone up to your head. So kind of lay yourself down, make sure your whole spine is supported. And then you're gonna do an angel you know, if you grew up somewhere that has snow, it's like a snow angel. So your arms are just going out to the side and up as far as they can, and then back down to your side. Doing this will obviously work shoulder range of motion, but it also causes all of those big peripheral nerves that start in our neck and run down our arm. It causes them to slide and move. So we know this from studies with cadavers where scientists put pins in the nerves and then move the arms. We see that the nerves need to be able to slide. And so doing things like this has been shown to help those nerves slide better and improve blood flow to the nerves, which can help reduce pain. So with this one, you know, go for 10 to 15 repetitions. You could do this three to five times throughout the day to help reduce nerve pain and improve nerve health. Okay, so that's our second exercise, an angel. For the third exercise, we're now gonna be a little more specific about targeting some of those nerves in our arms. We've got our median nerve, ulnar nerve, and radial nerve. Those are the three big nerves in the arms. So 
we're gonna now perform a nerve mobilization that targets all three of these nerves. So what you're gonna do, you can be sitting here on the ground or on a chair. You're first, you're gonna reach up overhead. You're going to move your wrist into extension and then bring your arm down slowly to shoulder height. And then from there, you're gonna rotate your arm over and bend your wrist into flexion and reach behind you. Okay, so again, reach up overhead Bring your wrist into extension, drop your arm down. This is going to stretch the median nerve and then turn your arm over, bend your wrist into flexion and reach behind you. So this combined movement like this will mobilize really your median nerve here initially, which is the biggest nerve from the neck and then radial nerve, which goes into the tricep area and the top side of the forearm. So we're going to really hit those two nerves. So for something like this, just Take it gradually. Sometimes when you have nerve pain, if you do these things too many times, it can make the nerve pain worse. So you just wanna find the right dosage of the movement so you don't flare up your pain and you can help knock it down. So just kind of move through this. It should be kind of a flowing movement where you're just kind of moving through. It doesn't have to be real specific. You're not holding really tightly. You're just moving your arm kind of through this pattern to help mobilize those nerves. So again, maybe go for 10 to 15 repetitions. Try it a couple, two or three times throughout the day. That's our third exercise, a nerve mobilization. For the fourth exercise, again, when we're thinking about stenosis, we're thinking about a narrowing of that hole where the nerve root comes out. So anything we can do to open that frame in that hole can help the nerve. So if I've got symptoms down my right arm, I wanna open the joints on the right side of my neck to give that nerve some room to breathe. So what I'm gonna do for this stretch is I'm gonna bend my head away so that opens the joints where the nerve's coming out, and then I'm gonna look to, the, so I'm bending to the left, and then I'm gonna look to the left and slightly forward. Okay, so I'm kind of looking down at my opposite knee. And again, this combination of side bend to the left, rotation to the left, and flexion will open those joints and give those nerves some room to breathe on the right side. So you're just gonna hold here for maybe five to 10 seconds, come back up, side bend left, rotate left, and look down. Now, if your symptoms are on your left arm, don't do this one because that will actually close the joints on this side and can make the nerve pain worse. So if it's on my left side, my arm pain's on my left side, I've got to go right side bend, right rotation, and look down, okay? So with cervical stenosis, usually it just bothers one arm. So you just got to pick the side that's right for you. If it's hurting my right arm, I'm going to bend to the left. If it's my left arm, I'm going to bend to the right. Okay, so that is our fourth exercise, basically a neck stretch to open those cervical joints and give the nerve some room to breathe. Our last exercise here is gonna be the only sort of activation and strengthening one. So it's at the end of the program because it's the most challenging. Uh, if, it, if your symptoms are acute, just wait on this one, maybe wait a few weeks until your symptoms are getting better and then this will help strengthen your neck and help prevent these issues from coming back. So what you're gonna do on this one is lay on your back and we're gonna strengthen the muscles on the front side of the neck, the neck flexors. So what you're gonna do is tuck your chin, kind of like you're giving yourself a double chin, and then lift your head just until it clears the floor. And then you're gonna hold here. So your goal is to hold as long as you can. In healthy people, in the, in the research, we see that this is about 30 to 40 seconds. If you have neck pain, you probably won't be able to hold that long. You might only be able to hold five seconds or 10 seconds. Then you just set back down, give yourself a second to rest, and then tuck your chin again and lift and hold. So this is an isometric contraction of our neck flexor muscles. And we've seen in the research that this can often help people with neck pain and even jaw pain. So just work on building up your time as you get tired, set back down. You know, maybe you do three to five repetitions like this each day and work on building up that hold time until you can reach something like 30 to 40 seconds. Okay, so those are the exercises that uh, are good ones that often work for people with cervical stenosis. <clears throat> Just one other thing to mention, you guys, I have a new book coming out uh, May 30th. It's available on Amazon now, and it has comprehensive programs that take you through three phases of rehab. My YouTube videos are often just sort of samples of exercises. The book is nice in that the programs guide you through phases of rehab like we would do in an actual physical therapy um, physical therapy session. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description to it on Amazon. It has 30 programs in the book for the 50 most common orthopedic conditions. So if you have any questions about today's video, put them in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.